Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this video we're covering a new feature, a part of Unreal Engine 5 called Level Instancing. This is a new technique that we can bring in to use with a world partition system that is also new to Unreal Engine 5. So let's take a look. So in Unreal Engine 5, Level Instancing kind of replaced what Level Streaming used to be. And Level Instancing are basically way to put levels inside of other levels and you can then code them to do stuff and make you able to do like things called prefabs um, a lot easier so here's an example uh, using the infinity blade assets uh, in this map we've got this statue and this fountain combined together like so um, so i'm just going to select all of these pieces okay and then if i right click on them i'll see the option for level and you'll see the option for create level instance. Now right, we'll talk about the pack level actor in a second, but let's just create a level instance. And when you do that, it's going to give you this box. And this box is going to ask you basically where you want to set the pivot and how it's going to work. So the pivot by default is going to be center minimum Z. So basically it will look at the height of it and look at the minimum height of it. So the bottom and it will aim for the center. Okay. So in this instance, it works quite well for this uh, fountain, but there may be an occasion where you want to say, choose a particular actor in your selection that you want to use or use the world origin whatever it may be now one thing that's really useful about doing it this way is you can do prefabs where you can make buildings and houses out of pieces and then rather than rebuild them over and over and over again you can just package them up into a level instance and then you can just reuse them as you wish so the way it works is once you've set up your pivot type you hit ok it'll ask you to save it we'll save it there and I've now got my fountain as a prefab and you'll see here on the right hand side in the outliner level instance 5 and you'll see in here I've got these assets which I can't click on uh, in, in this current state at least anyway but what it means is I can now make duplicates of this really easily uh, it just treats it as like one object basically um, just drag out another one and another one and these are treated like separate levels um, so you can actually go into these and edit them like levels um, so if I was to open this up I'll just get that asset all on its own. Okay, so there it is. It's just hard to see because there's no light. But that's it. That's all they are on their own. So they are, they are basically prefabs that you can place around in any way you like. So let's go back to our previous level that we were in. And go back to this one. Okay, so there are my prefabs there. Now, if I want to edit them or change anything about them, be aware that if you change it, and change one of them, it will change all of them. Okay, because they are just copies of each other. But I'm going to show you some things around that in a minute. But to edit them, just right click on these and go level and go to edit. You also have the option to break it apart as well. So if you want to bring it, break it apart into its individual components again, you can do so by hitting the break button here. But let's go to edit and it will go to this view uh, where you can then move things about, do what you want with them. If I move that up there, and then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to right click on it, level, and then go to commit. And it will commit those changes, and you'll see all the others have updated this too. So let's say you're building a city, you built one building, and you make one change, you want it to affect all the others, you can just do that really easily with level instances. But what if you want to be a bit cleverer than that? Okay, so there is another option. Let me just take that out, take this out, and undo this, and let's show the break. Uh, level break break level instance and yep and you'll see it get broken into its individual parts again let me bring that back down okay so the other option which i m mentioned briefly before is the packed level actor so very similarly you're going to get the same box come up hit ok it's going to ask you whether you want to save the map i'm going to save it there then it'll ask you to save something else it'll ask you to save the blueprint of it so that's why it comes in as a blueprint. So let's open this up. So as you can see over here, it's now a blueprint level instance rather than just a level instance with pieces in it. So what makes this really easy is there is now a blueprint of it, which I can just click and drag it out. I can easily see what it is just by looking at the picture. Really simple. And if I was to open this up, you'll see it's already made them instant static meshes and put them inside the actor itself. And what it will do is automatically try and do this as, as cleanly as possible. Um, so if it has a way to do instance ones, it will do instance ones. If it's trying to do uh, more hi hierarchical instance ones, it can do as well. Uh, no matter what the case is, it will try and do its best to make it as uh, 
streamlined as possible. But here it is in all its glory. And again, if you change anything here, it'll change it in all of them. However, because it is a blueprint, we can add functionality to it to do interesting things. So let's say, for example, I wanted this asset at the top here, this statue, to change based upon an option I want to give it. Well, what I can do is I can go to my construction script, drag out this instance mesh, and in here I'm going to do set static mesh. <clears throat> and the new mesh we're going to do, we're going to drag out and promote that to a variable. And let me delete the old one. So here's a statue mesh and it's a variable. And I'm going to tick instance editable and, and no, not exposed, just instance editable. Uh, so that will change the mesh, but we also have to change the materials as well. So what we're going to do is take the instance static mesh and do set material and we're going to get material and plug that in now sometimes you might get ones that got multiple materials on them that's no problem either you can just do this instead where you get the mesh and you get materials and you get the static materials and then in here we're going to do a for each loop sign Like so, and we're going to drag out my instant static mesh and do set material. And we'll plug in the array index into element index, and then the material will be this array element split. So we break that apart and get material interface. So now, it, no matter how many materials the mesh that we give it has, it will match it perfectly. And because it's on the construction script, I can easily test this inside of my game editor. So let's go back to here and you can see they're all gone and that's because the default for this is none. But I can put in anything I want in here. So we've got uh, the angel, angel statue in that one. In this one we can say there is a, I don't know, uh, think another statue. Ooh, I hope I can spell statue quickly. Um, we'll go for that one. And we can add another one in here and we'll go for this one okay so you can do interesting things with this uh system and so that's level instances and hopefully you can start seeing the benefit of what you can do with these things because we can make this blueprint do anything we like um but it's really useful for things like prefab so when building a town or a large urban environment Buildings come to mind as a really easy, simple way to make buildings uh, using level instances. And there we go. We can now use level instances in our projects. Hopefully you can see some really cool uses for this, including like creating uh, prefabs and other instance assets like that, where you can change one thing and make it affect it throughout the level. So lots of really cool things you can do there. If you like this video content and you want to see more of my content before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch all my videos before anyone else from just $1 a month. I say thank you to all those who are supporting me and if you're watching this and not subscribed, hit that little subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.